Welcome, everyone, and thanks for joining uh, this Unitronics webinar on cybersecurity. My name is Dan Logi. I manage the technical support department for Unitronics USA branch. If you have any questions during today's webinar, uh, there will be a question and answer session at the end. Please enter those questions real time into the questions box. We will be addressing those at the end of the presentation. A look at today's agenda. I'll be talking about cybersecurity background in industrial automation, providing some facts and some resources. We will take a look at Unitronics action items and what Unitronics is doing in the world of cybersecurity. I'll discuss what users should be protecting and the Unitronics recommendations. I'll also be recapping Vision and Samba cybersecurity features, Unistream cybersecurity features, and UniCloud cybersecurity features. Starting with some industrial cybersecurity facts. About one third of global cybersecurity attacks are targeting the industrial sector. The graph to the right shows a breakdown of sector uh, a lot of it is coming in the manufacturing and energy industries. Uh, these are some of the main targets because they bring the largest potential value to the attacker. According to Kapersky annual reports, these attacks are growing exponentially year over year. You can see that in the chart to the left. So we can expect these attacks to continue growing and these numbers be even larger in the years to come. taking a moment to cover how the attacks are surfacing and how the attackers are using available resources on the internet to find and attack equipment. In recent years, there's been a website published, uh, Shodan.io. This website is scanning the internet for ICS and IoT devices. It is then publishing their weaknesses, their access data, IPs, and ports. Attackers can search for devices they want to attack. They can search by manufacturer, country, and even functionality, like VNC. OK, so some Unitronics action items. Uh, Unitronics is working closely with several agencies, including Israel National Cyber Directorate and CISA. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Unitronics is following their guidelines and testing the products in authorized labs continuously. Okay, so some may know, but during the last two years, Unitronics has uh, received several certifications relating to cybersecurity. Unitronics is certified as a company for ISO 27001 for distribution and production of industrial automation devices, including PLCs, Unilogic, and so on. Unitronics is also certified for ISO 27017 as a cloud provider for the UniCloud platform. So these are a few international standards for cybersecurity that Unitronics is complying with. So moving on to what users should protect. What are the critical PLC components that users should be protecting? First, the application. We want to protect it from being deleted, damaged, or overwritten. System configuration parameters, things like the IP addresses, port settings, Modbus configuration, serial parameters, and more uh, should be protected. Application parameters, things like set points, boundaries, we're looking to protect those. Any generated files from the PLC. Any HMI operations, web server operations, or remote access will also be important to consider. Okay, and during the webinar, we're going to talk about uh, different levels of protection. There's the device level, right, things like protecting the HMI passwords the network level, 
And finally, enhanced protection, like VPN settings, two-factor authentication, and more. Here are some general ICS cybersecurity guidelines. All industrial equipment should be protected by network equipment with firewall functionality. Avoid port forwarding or network address translation. Instead, use VPN, ideally with two-factor authentication. When possible, separate OT, which is operation tech, from IT, which is information tech. We understand that's not always possible, but when it's possible, uh, it's a good idea to separate those two. Don't allow remote management of any network equipment, things like routers. Utilize the latest software and firmware versions provided by the manufacturing vendor. As it pertains to Unitronics, uh, Unitronics is constantly making improvements, um, evaluating cyber threats, and adapting based on those. Uh, so the latest firmware and software will always have the latest protections. And Unitronics UCR family is a great option for network access equipment. Uh, the UCR has embedded firewall functionality and VPN functionality built in. Okay, next, we'll talk about Vision and Samba cybersecurity. A lot of these features were added to the new version 9.9.00 available on the website. First, info mode access. Info mode is a backdoor set of screens on any Samba or Vision product. It allows you access to things like PLC settings, IP addressing, ports, serial settings. You can force I.O., change tags or operands, load, a, uh, load applications from an SD card, and more. So in the newest version of Visilogic, it now enforces a info mode password. You can see the new function block in the picture to the right. It's a four number password and simple passwords like 1111 will not be accepted. When possible, reduce the number of sockets you have set to server mode. When you're considering your uh, network infrastructure, set any unused sockets to client mode. Uh, this way they will not be remotely accessible. Coming soon, in a new version of Visilogic, all Ethernet sockets will have the default of client. Next, there have been some system operands that are intended to lock various operation features for users. SB314, system bit 314, is assigned to block PCOM traffic. PCOM is the protocol used by Unitronic software packages like Visilogic or Remote Operator. Other protocols like Modbus will remain enabled. Also, System Double Word 10 is a bitmap allowing the user to enable and disable certain functionality. Bit zero blocks run, stop, init, reset, and download to the unit. Bit one blocks any changes to RS-232 or CAN bus parameters. Bit two blocks remote access for keypad. Bit three blocks write to data tables and download. Bit four blocks the writing to operand memory in bit 5 blocks SD card operations. So to recap, changing the value of SDW10 will enable and disable different functionality. Okay, the next feature released is a PCOM Ethernet socket password. This password is a requirement in the new version. 
and it should be set on power up system bit 2. The password is supporting a length up to 16 characters. And when a new device tries to connect to the PLC over an Ethernet socket, it will be prompted to enter the password. Okay, the next addition is relating to Modbus. Using system integers 165 to 168, you can set ranges for coil addresses and register addresses. This is an inclusive list, meaning the registers within the set range will be accessible over Modbus. Everything outside of the range will be denied access. So you set the range in SI 165 to 168, and you enable the range using system bit 305, turning that on. In future versions, Visilogic will enforce the use of these system integers and system bits. As enhanced protection, UniCloud can be used with Vision or Samba. When using UniCloud, there is no need for public and static IP addresses. No need for port forwarding. Everything is done over a VPN connection. There's embedded firewall functionality included. The data is encrypted, both in transit and at rest. There is two-factor authentication on the UniCloud. So the UniCloud is allowing a full secure remote access, again, without any public available IP addresses. The machine is totally secure using a VPN connection. So UniCloud is a really nice option to get secure protection. Next, we'll discuss Unistream cybersecurity features. There is a new version of UniLogic available on the website 1.35.227. We are recommending that anybody with cyber concerns uh, does update to this version. It has improved system cybersecurity resilience, mandatory password updates, VNC passwords are now mandatory. So again, anybody with cyber concerns, I'd like to stress that we are recommending you upgrade to 1.35.227. Okay, let's talk about some device level uh, features that are available. UniLogic will now require that the user set a access password for each unit. You can change the password on first access when you go to download or under Unistream management, change password. It can also be set in UniApps. Anytime UniLogic goes to connect from a new device, the password will be requested. UniApps is the backdoor set of screens for Unistream. It has things like network configuration, tag access, I.O. access. So Unitronics recommends password protecting the UniApps screen. This can be done in a variety of ways, from just a UniApps password to UAC, user account access. If the Unistream will be generating any files, it's recommended to set up or schedule FTP or email backups of those generated files. That way you're not relying on local storage, right? Uh, all that information will be backed up. Upon commissioning of a device, if you are using retained tags, it's recommended that you back up those retained tags to a USB-F file. This can be done in UniApps or from UniLogic. This way, if the PLC memory is ever compromised, uh, you can reload the retained tags based on the USBF file instead of re-entering everything manually. Keep Unistream up to date with the latest Unitronics firmware. Uh, again, Unitronics is following cyber issues and cyber threats very closely. 
uh, constantly making improvements based on any new uh, or found threat, fixing any issues. Uh, so you can follow the release notes that we publish for more information on each release. VNC is a virtual network connection. It allows you to view uh, the screen remotely when set to server mode. The new Unilogic will require a password when VNC is enabled. We do recommend uh, a complex password so that your HMI is remotely protected. User access control manages HMI users. You can assign different levels to users and assign them to different groups, and they can have different permissions on the HMI. So this will protect against any uh, accidental right, HMI interaction. There's also users and passwords on the web server. So if a web server is enabled, we recommend utilizing that functionality. There's the option to digitally sign any machine generated files, for example, alarm logs or data tables or data samplers. Uh, when creating those files on the SD card, you can digitally sign them. Okay, there's a tool in Unilogic to verify the sign and make sure that the files were not tampered with. Okay, network level security. When enabling a protocol, set read-write permissions appropriately and use read-only when possible. Uh, the example to the right shows a Modbus slave addressing table. And you can see you have the option for permissions, read-only or read-write. Avoid any unnecessary protocol usage. If the application calls for Modbus only, avoid enabling OPC UA, BACnet, or any other unused protocols. Keep those protocols off. Set the network settings only if the application calls for it. Like the panel IP or the CPU IP, if they're not being used, do not assign those functions. Unilogic has a nice option called SD Browse under Unistream Management, and it can be used to access the contents of the SD card remotely. And it can be used as an alternative to FTP or in place of FTP. Uh, consider using encrypted methods of network protocols. So any protocols that have encryption like MQTT are a nice alternative to non-encrypted protocols. Okay, just recapping UniCloud once more. The UniStream line of controllers is compatible with UniCloud. It's offering a secure connection uh, over VPN. No public and static IP addressing required. No port forwarding. There is embedded firewall functionality. The data is encrypted. Two-step authentication is supported. And the UCR is a optional gateway in the Unistream's case. The Unistream is cloud ready, so it can be connected directly to the cloud, not requiring the UCR. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna pause and review any questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to enter them into the questions box now.